She will be saying that. I am here. I am here at the moment. She's going to say, get rid of our human rights. This is Simon. That's me. I really loved him. Sometimes I hated him. He changed my life. Jamie, you know, Philip died. Really? When? I think two years ago or something. What's a lot of people. Ooh, and, uh, you know, one day I'm not going to go to the march because of all these people that are gone and... This is the last and time Simon. Simon and I were together. We, we met him. Yeah, he, he was one of the big um, organizers. He died of AIDS complications a week later. It was interesting how he pulled out all these mags and books and you know, put on the video, said, hey, remember all this? It, 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 even for me, it felt like, oh, wow, you know, because these are th some of the things I tried to forget. I also remember, she's actually coming next year here. Yeah? yeah? Mm. For Just some of for the Ilga things Ilga he Ilga. remembered that I did, or some of the things he didn't remember, you know, he didn't remember whether it was me that went with him to a particular place, you know? And I thought, okay. Yeah, you got the tap people. Oh, oh, the lady. Oh my God. See? On the one hand, you kind of think, okay, is it his illness? On the other hand, I'm thinking, but how could he have forgotten that? It didn't, it didn't mean as much to him as it did for me, I suppose. My name is Bev. I grew up in Orlando West Soweto. People look out for each other here, and there's a deep respect for religion, tradition, and culture. So it's not easy to be different. I was raised by my grandma and my grandpa because my mom was usually away on tour. I discovered my love for music from my mom. She was one of the best singers of her time, and I always dreamt of being a singer, just like her. That's me. That's me on TV. Hey, Gail, come see this. That's me. Gail, come see this. It's on TV. Ah. My first song was called Captured by Love. <laughs> I was 12 years old. <laughs> oh no, I don't believe I'm gonna do this. <laughs> oh no, I don't believe I'm gonna do this. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Just take note, I am embarrassed to be doing this. Right. Captured, captured by love. I'm captured. I was a happy child growing up, but I always felt like something was wrong with me. I hated it when my grandma forced me into little dresses. My mom used to say that God started making me before lunch, and when he came back, he had forgotten whether he was making a boy or a girl. Somebody help to find the key. It's lost and I don't know where it is. I'm trapped and I can't run away. Somebody, something help. When I was 10, my mom had a role in a TV drama. One day she took me along for an audition and I was very proud when they cast me as her son rather than her daughter. Although I was very young, I remember the youth riots that began on June 16, 1976. I remember the fear, the tear gas, and the screaming. I didn't know Simon then. He was a student leader at his school in Sibukeng when he was arrested for the first time. They came to pick me. I was tiny little. My school uniform finished in the prison cell. I wanted education so badly, but I wouldn't really go with the system of the education then. And I think that's why our slogan was freedom now and education later. 
you know. We really wanted to be free. Fighting the national government. You know, I don't know which government I've never fought. If the old one and the new one, I'm still fighting. While he was fighting those battles, I was just beginning with mine. Girls at school were falling in love with boys, and I wasn't interested. My confusion started when I realized that I was the only one I knew who liked girls more than boys. I didn't know words like gay or lesbian. I just thought that I was very odd. That's when I started to feel the loneliness. In 1985, Simon was picked up with his best friend, Lina Malindi, at an activist funeral in Sibukeng Township. The state was detaining every leader throughout the country. In the van, I was alone between 10 policemen. And I was just quiet, you know, like I just see Sibukeng from a distance. And I was, you know, goodbye to my home. You know, you, everybody was confused. Some people were injured, you know. They were beating people, you know, like they were not human beings. And you know, I thought I was just going to be interrogated and be left. How stupid I was to think that. Simon and Klina were amongst 22 activists that were charged with treason. They all spent the next three years in jail without any idea of their fate. There was so much emotion. Uh, these people were on trial for their lives. The, the state wanted to have them executed. Their trial was known as the Delmas Treason Trial and became one of the most high-profile cases in the history of South Africa. And while on trial for his life, Simon announced to his fellow trialists that he was a gay man. Against all their wishes, he went public with this information. One of the co-accused had said that um, we can't be seen to be on trial with people who are embarrassing us and our organizations and so on. And why did they put such people together with us? Simon was totally without fear. And, 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 and totally transparent, you know, and, and prepared to be himself at all costs. It was during this time that Simon wrote many letters to Roy. Roy, darling, it's not wise to be on your own for such a long time, especially when you feel down. Dear Roy, I am trying this silly method to get this letter to you before they could censor it. It was nice to speak to him. He told me how worried you are about me. But I am much more worried about you than I am about myself. I was an activist because of Simon, because Simon answered my amazing needs. And, and, and his, the fact that he was fighting apartheid, which, which I had been brought up in my spirituality to know was against the will of God. My sort of integrity, the center of me, came together in Simon. And, and the fellowship that I knew around that trial was something I'd never experienced in my life. <laughs> As word of the trial spread, support poured in from many parts of the world. Simon started to become a gay hero. Give me a plate, One evening I was doing the dishes in the kitchen and Boy George was on the radio. My sister said, hey, if he's gay, that must mean you are gay. I was so excited that I didn't think before I burst into the lounge and said, hey, I'm gay. Bad mistake. And then, and then after I told you, I said, mom, yeah, yeah. I'm gay. Yeah, it was a shock. And then we wanted to know the explanation of gay, because what we knew is there's something called, you know, two ways. And we are hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. There's no such a thing. 
o holetse mona ke mo khodisitse ke nnane ke mo tlhapisa so ha se ntho e ne ke sa tsebori mo thulae le mosadi o ba ntho e o ne ke nana hore motho o jwalo ke motho a na le dintho two things so be ke gana ke right there's no such from that day i was made to feel dirty and guilty all the time but i couldn't just lie and pretend to be like everyone else Nothing made sense. Later that year, I attempted suicide. The Dalmas treason trial finally ended in 1988, and five of the accused, including Dina, were sentenced to life imprisonment on Robben Island. Simon and the other 16 were acquitted. A year later, the whole thing was declared a mistrial, and everyone was set free. But while Simon was in prison, he found out that he had another life sentence, HIV. Keep all those things, babe. I don't understand why you want to throw them out. They've got nice memories. Mm. Well, some of these memories is painful, you know? Mm. Especially when you know people are not around. Mm. from an early age that I had no choice about where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do, you know. I mean, I was always being told what a, a beautiful wife I'm going to make for so-and-so. I wasn't brought up ever to be just me, Bev. Whatever it is I want to do with my life, do, you know? And, and just learning the rules of what I can do and what I can't do because I'm a girl. While they laugh when she tells them And slowly her hopes die And slowly she dies Like all her sisters around the world Who gave up on everything for a man Even though Simon was acquitted, he was still forbidden to meet with more than three people at a time. He went ahead anyway and called together a group of gays and lesbians to form GLOW, the gay and lesbian organization of Vitvatasrand. A friend of mine told me about that meeting. I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't hesitate. That was the day I met Simon. For the first time, I was happy. I was home. I was born gay, <laughs> and I'm proud of it, and I want all of you to be proud to be what you are. That's all I can say. Funny how a little change can cause such debate about the way I dress or present myself as I find my own space. Funny how from that day, my life transformed. I just blossomed. There were meetings, rallies, and parties all the time. I found what I'd been looking for, a place to belong. I now had friends and a political space to express myself, where I didn't have to explain anything to anyone. Simon and I clicked immediately. He was so easygoing and inspirational. Simon was an extraordinary package of a lot of different things. He could be coy and coquettish. He could be a rampant queen. He could be petulant and spiteful and mean. He could also be immensely generous. And above all, he had vision and courage. 
How bad he was shot. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing and caring. Always laughing, always making jokes, wherever he was, you'll never see somebody crying. I loved attention. Yes. <laughs> you did, yeah, he doesn't. But uh, he thrived on it, I guess. You don't pay my way around and you don't feed my soul. You don't this business of, of going on the dance floor for three hours flat, you know. He just had such incredible energy about everything that he did. It's just the easy way in which he just took me into his life. You know, like a little sister. He just pulled me in, right in, and didn't mind me calling at any time, didn't mind me coming over, sleeping over, you know? Philosophy. Pour me a drink, I want to appear to be drinking. Oh, I'll pour you a drink, my dear. Sing. That's nice. Mix it with that one of yours. The peaches one. It's the peaches, yeah, orange one. I don't know. Maybe I should give grandies, but I can't give him the whole no, make thing. make a copy. Yeah. Because that was a nice speech. Yes, sir. It was. It was a nice speech. I, go, I won an award for that speech. You've not been invited to New York. I Just I was now. invited to Glasgow. I didn't go because of I was sick. Yeah. But wait until I get better. Maybe I'm going back to the world. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of sitting in here. <laughs> Absolutely, sir. Nelson Mandela was finally released from prison and all political parties were unbanned. Because of Simon's contact with him and other Delmas leaders, we were confident that the ANC would support us. It was in this climate of expectation that GLOW made its first public statement and Simon initiated the first gay and lesbian pride march. We didn't know whether people would come or not. We were really terrified there would only be a few of us and that we would be attacked while marching in the street. Homosexuality is a sin against God. Homosexuality is a curse on the nation. Homosexuality leads to eternity in hell. I mean, I'm a man. Eh? Then I don't expect another man to sleep with me. Eh? I can't make love to another man. Where do we want them? Now! Why do we want? Yes, Where do we want them? Now! Why do we want? Yes, they have no right to do this, you know, because uh, we, as Christians, we believe it is a, a big sin. <laughs> We live in a homophobic society. This is why we're marching. We want to change this. This meeting and this march today have a message. We have a message to all the lawmakers of South Africa, a message to all the constitution makers of South Africa. That message is the criminal law is for criminals. Gays and lesbians are not criminals. We here in South Africa have been oppressed for too long. We can't stand it anymore. Why do we have to fight for the right to love who we want to love? This is about time, and today we're making history. This is what I say to my comrades in the struggle who ask me why I waste time fighting for Morphis. And this is what I say to white gay men or women who ask me why I spend so much time talking about apartheid when I should be fighting for gay rights. I am black and I'm gay. I cannot separate the two parts of me into secondary or primary struggle. They will be all one struggle. When I heard that speech, I was so in awe of Simon. 
I knew then that I wanted to work alongside him to get gays and lesbians legally recognized in the new South Africa. Everybody has equal rights and everybody is protected by the law. Or became day. straight. I others are still around. Shame. You remember they stole that band? They stole oh, the my late lover. That first pride was one of the best days of my life. But I was on TV that night. It was a religious show, and a priest was saying these people should be killed. All of a sudden, I was getting funny looks from people in the street. I thought, oh uh oh, what have I done? Two days later, I was sitting in my room when I heard voices outside calling my name. I ran into the lounge and my granny opened the door and told me to hide. About 20 angry men were surrounding our house, demanding that I come with them so they could teach me a lesson. The worst thing was that they threatened to take my grandma if I didn't go with them. How did it feel, Mom? I was angry, but mostly at myself. I shouldn't have made that speech. Now I put my whole family in danger. I was so terrified that I couldn't leave the house for weeks. In terms of sexual violence and violence against women and the, the way women are treated, here yeah, it's you, 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 as soon as you anywhere, anywhere you, you've got a dangerous element right there. You're always looking out for yourself because anything could happen anytime, you know? Um, rape, being beat up, just being treated like shit, being excluded, you know, things. But coming out as a lesbian is even harder because then you are putting yourself in the firing line. 
um, any angry man will use his machismo to try and prove to you that you're straight. Although he's proving absolutely nothing, because all he's doing is actually raping you and making you hate men, when actually, you know, that's not what it's about at all. It's about loving women. It came a point where you couldn't walk alone to the taxis, where I used to take you halfway all the time. Where you had to be escorted. And I didn't care what they were saying. To me it was like, talk, but um, nobody's going to touch it. There wasn't much Lo could do to help me then. In fact, someone said it would be better if I just moved out of Soweto. The best thing that could have happened did. Instead of being rejected, I had gained my family's full support. Simon and I became co-chairs of GLOW. We became a team. Our country was drafting a new constitution, and as GLOW, we wanted to make sure that gays and lesbians were included. We did everything we could. We ran workshops, organized more pride marches, wrote articles, and made many public appearances. Welcome, please, the co-chair of GLOW, the gay and lesbian organization of the Bit Butters Round, the beautiful Beverly Palessa Ditsy. <laughs> Why go out on the streets, demonstrate old placards and things like this? What would you say to I that? would say to those people, the reason why it is said that it is un-African to be gay is because no one in those days actually spoke about it. Mm -hmm. And if we keep quiet about it, 30 years, 40, 50 years from now, mm -hmm. there's the next generation that's going to keep saying the exact same thing, that we don't exist. And it's because they didn't speak out. He was my mentor and my teacher, so of course I wanted to prove that I'm learning. I'm learning, so I would ace everything that he would say, Bev, if you could do X, Y, I, would, I will do X, Y, and Z. You know, I wanted to please him. The newly formed National Coalition for Gay and Lesbian Equality, together with GLOW, was making good progress with a constitutional campaign. Even government officials, who until now had refused to negotiate, agreed to a dialogue. When the police forum started in 1994, they called us. Bev and I went to meet um, Sidney Mafuna and to tell them what we want the policemen to treat us like. I started to join Simon on his overseas trips. I was meeting new people, visiting other organizations, and I was very inspired by how other lesbians were living their lives. He was incredible. I mean, he made, he made me challenge myself, you know? He made me wonder how far I could go as well, how much I could take. <laughs> I took the visibility campaign one step further and auditioned for an experimental reality TV show called The Live Wire Communites. Something like Big Brother, but without the million at the end. Eight very different people were thrown together in this luxurious commune and filmed for six months. Dave is in the house. I've got a problem with you. What? Uh, sexual preferences are pretty important to me. Mm -hmm. And you didn't let me know. I didn't let anyone know. But everybody knew. <laughs> um, see, I don't like those type of people. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna be acting weird to you, okay, you must understand. I mean, look at you, you're a black gay activist. I mean yes it's like we're talking about way different, okay? Way different. And I used to beat up gays, you know, because as far as I'm concerned they don't belong on earth, you know. They're wrong. They naturally screwed up. Hmm. Okay. That's um, heavy. Yeah. But that's the way I see life. Okay. So I hope for you to try and make me see different. How, how am I going to make you see different? Um, at this stage, you know. I mean, we got along in the beginning, you know. <laughs> now I don't even want to be near you. Okay. So. I want to um, say this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm here, and I'm going to stick it out for the six months. You know? So if we're going to be avoiding each other in corridors just because of who I love deeply, 
then, so, you know, I mean, it's not going to work out, Lulu. Okay. Because it's not like I hate men. Dude, I don't hate men. Please, get that you straight. Do not like it. I don't hate men. I don't feel that radical, okay? But I personally feel that being homosexual is like a bit mentally retarded. It's yeah, just the way, it's the way that I look at life. You know, it's a like a person, but at least like don't avoid them and don't make them feel like an You never said he was gonna... I said never said, said I was gonna avoid him. I can understand. Okay, like, yeah, maybe Man, I'm how many go. times have we black people been walking into places and been looked at strangely? This is Do you know how you're black. Look, no, it's exactly the same thing, man. It is the exact same thing. You walk into a place and you get looked at strangely. People look down on you just because of the color of your skin. It's been happening generations and generations all over the world, right? And now I'm going to say something and he's going to look at me strangely and act strangely and I must accept that? The fact that you're a human being who has other passions in your life, who has other people in your life that you love and care about, who has the same dreams and goals, you know, to be happy, and to be loved, and and it's it that whole discrimination even still confuses me. But I was fighting so much to try and prove that I am not different to you, and that's not all it's about. I don't lesbian for a living. I mean, she's good with it. In the end, and... Leroux and I became friends. Okay. I mean, he even gave me his guitar. The closer we came to the signing of the constitution, the greater the opposition to our cause. We're here today because we believe it is a blatant sin that it not only defiles a person, but defiles a nation. Uh, and because of that cause, God will withdraw his blessings from the country. Our African neighbor was the most vocal in his opposition. If we accept homosexuality as a right, as is being argued by the Association of Sodomists and Sexual, <laughs> and sexual Perverts, what moral fiber shall our society ever have to deny organized drug addicts, or even those given to bestiality. Bev did see join the human rights protest that greeted Robert Mugabe when he arrived in South Africa. And we are gay, and we are not criminals, and we do not deserve to be called all those names. Let them be gay in the United States, in Europe, and elsewhere. They shall be sad people here. Yes. But I mean, today we are here to show the world that um, we are here and we are African and we are gay. And we Salmon and I had worked together for six uh, years now. We had fought hard to get where we were. Yet there were times where I felt that he didn't acknowledge me. And I mean, no matter how many other people kind of say, he was so proud of you, he loved you so much, I never did hear that. So it, it, it's always a question in my mind how he actually really felt about me because I adored him. Here's my speech. <laughs> this is what I said. I came here to present in the year as yeah. the organization of oh, based in John as like this is I remember they were giving us only two minutes yeah. to speak. Yeah. How many people were you speaking mm. to? Do you remember? Uh, because it was more than a million that was no, they were they were mentioned. Mm. And here is it. This is a non-racial mm. mm. oh, but here they I think I did exaggerate it. Three thousand members guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Oh, my voiceover. Yeah, this is my speech. They speak of a constitutional, democratic political order in which regardless of color, gender, religion, political opinion, or sexual orientation, the law will provide for the equal protection of all of our citizens. It was absolutely exhilarating. It was the first constitution in the history of the world that actually mentioned sexual orientation. We were accepted by our government. Actually, our government, uh, the people that kind of ruled and make the rules, said, you are okay. You sh nobody should touch you. <laughs> no one can touch you.
We had won the constitutional battle, but the fight wasn't over. An even bigger enemy was facing the country. Eight. Okay, and now I'm seeing a lot of hands, so I don't know. Which when Simon set up the Township AIDS project, okay, okay. I joined him as an AIDS educator with the vision of focusing on lesbians and AIDS. It was during this time that I saw that lesbians and gays were dealing with very different issues. Tell us, tell us how. I felt that the gay men, especially within GLOW, were not really caring very much about what became big lesbian issues, like lesbian rape, which increased at one point, you know, where lesbians would be targeted for rape. Before, before, let me check. I was living that life of being afraid to be in the streets. She was raped, you understand? To so go anywhere. So I wanted to be heard. Are you? <laughs> a lot of lesbians were there. So being in toilet, when I came back to the toilet, this man came and grabbed me. Say, I'm sorry. Okay, no, I want to talk to you. Say, no, you can't talk to me. I'm with my partner. Then what to give me? No, don't tell me that. Said, no, I'm in a partner. I am. He's, he, he yep. And I was close to him, and as a lesbian, I was the closest to him at that time. So I expected to be heard. I expected for him to respect where I was coming from. I was invited to the Fourth World Conference on Women to be held in Beijing. Some GLOW members didn't support me going, but I knew that the conference would address some of the issues facing us. So I went to talk to Simon about this. He was asking, you know, what relevance is this? You know, and for somebody who talks non-sexist, non-racist, non-non-non, for, for him to ask me that, was very disappointing. And then, of course, I said, well, I'm going anyway because, you know, it's a women's conference, and I mean, lesbians are women. No good luck, no goodbye, no nothing. I'm sad to say. Bev Ditsia became the first out lesbian to address a United Nations conference where she argued for the recognition of sexual orientation. I urge you to make this a conference for all women, regardless of their sexual orientation, and to recognize in the platform for action that lesbian rights are women's rights and that women's rights are universal, inalienable, and indivisible human rights. I urge you to remove the brackets from sexual orientation. Thank you. That speech was my highest achievement and my saddest moment. While I was on that podium, I knew that I was going to leave GLOW. Our privilege this morning to say welcome, Bear. I came back and I was a hero, but inside I felt the opposite. And Boko in Beijing. Beverly, you made history at the United Nations Conference. Very briefly, just tell us about it. At the government forum, we found out that we might have a chance to have a say. Sweetheart, it ain't worth it. And I'm sad to say. And you've hurt me too much. And it ain't working. No, no, it ain't worth it. I left the movement and began to focus on other areas of my life. Wow, 
Where are you from? From Philpinville, Brooklyn, or Brazzaville. Twelve <laughs> months, honey, qualify me not as a native. Simon was never far from my mind. We had lunch with Simon, his mom, Graham Reed, and some visitors. Simon used to call me a lipstick lesbian, even before I started wearing lipstick. A visiting researcher interviewed me about my past and also spoke to my friend Balis. I'm very happy that I met a person like Beverly because if it wasn't her, I wouldn't be standing here and have said what I said. Instead, I would be dead. But she, she saved my life. In my mind, she was a picture of victory. And she fought for all lesbians and gays. And I'm gonna take from where she did give up. And I'm gonna be a flower that doesn't fade for my lesbian sisters and my gay brothers. And, uh, yeah. And I realized, you know, that these, some of these people have been a part of my most formative years of my life, you know. Thought, yeah, you know, I can't just be angry and cut everybody out like that. Out of the blue, Simon called to invite me to Glow's 10th anniversary picnic. I was so happy. I couldn't miss that. Hi, babe. Hello. <laughs> Very nice seeing you today. Um, I hope I'll see you more often. Who is the lady to invent it? I'm to show you the halal. I'm going to show you the halal. I'm going to show you One, two, one, two. Mm -hmm. Which is, to me, just a I think we're very lucky in South Africa to be talking today after 10 years of our struggle. I mean, it's 10 years. I'm, I'm talking about when Blow was formed. Because there was nothing, nothing was happening before then. It's actually a very... A significant tree for me. It symbolizes for those people living with HIV. We have about 25 law members passed away in the past 10 years. Okay, and it is really sad that so many people have lost their life. Simon filled me in on what he'd been doing since we last saw each other. Look, she's wearing a pants. I am not. But she's the he told me that he'd started a new AIDS organization, the Positive African Men's Project. I just closed my um, project where I was doing HIV and AIDS, uh, AIDS education for people living with HIV and for people who are not living with HIV. The government refuses to give me funding. Five of my application were turned down and I was very upset. Now I'm not afraid to say I'm going to die of HIV and AIDS. In the world people die of anything. You can die of cancer, you can just walk in the street. So when there is life Use it. Oh, come on! First attempt! Damn! First attempt! Hey! 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 Hey
Father J.P. Heath came to me at St. Mary's Chapel and said Simon is dying. Then I realized that this guy was just intrinsically part of me. I even thought there would be a remote chance that he would open his eyes and say, hello Bev, just so that I could say, I love you Simon. Thank you. You know, for having been there for me, Sorry, we broke up. I was angry with you. I love you. And I mean, eventually, I mean, I was alone with him. Peter walked out, Roddy walked out, and I mean, I held his hand and I, I said these things, but I, I kept wishing he would open his eyes. But he was, he was gone by then. He was completely unconscious. And on this World AIDS Day, we report the death of gay rights and AIDS activist Tseko Simon Cordy, who died of AIDS complications yesterday afternoon. 41-year-old Cordy, a former Delmas treason trialist, was the founder of the gay organization GLOW. He received numerous international awards for his work as an AIDS counselor and educator. The 10th Pride Parade was a massive tribute to Simon. Everyone was there, 
including the usual protesters. Today, the judgment of God, the day which commits that sin, are worthy of death. Come to our churches and know how we feel and who we are, what we're doing, what we don't do as gay Christians. I tell you that the Bible says it is an abomination to God Almighty. The cool thing was that I fell in love again. It was incredible to see over 20,000 people stop to celebrate the new street name. I missed him terribly. I wasn't the only one.